Welcome back gamers. Today we're taking a look at advanced features for the maps and lighting effects in Fantasy Grounds Unity. We'll be building out uh, an example map. We'll be setting it up with the player features, line of sight, lighting effects. To start off, you'll open the map you want to use by going to the images tab and then you will see a list of the maps that you already have imported. For this example, we're going to be using a small house that has a dead mage in it. So once the map is opened, you'll see on the right hand side that you have an edit pane. If you do not see the edit pane or you have imported a map from a different module, you can access that pane by toggling the data panel, which looks like the button with the lock up at the top. The first thing that I prefer to start off with is the grid. Any of the effects that are dependent on distance uh, will be based on your grid. So we'll go ahead and set that up real quickly. To do that, you can go over on the grid tab on your data pane and pick up the mouse and then find a spot where you can set your grid by clicking and dragging. Once that's set, uh, I normally hide it while we're working on the actual mapping effects. So that you can view the effects that you're doing in real, in real time, you'll want to come over here and choose to on, on the play tab and choose to enable the player vision uh, and the line of sight as well as the lighting effects. Um, first, before I enable the actual lighting effects and uh, you can see that it, it makes the screen go dark, uh, I choose to set the ambient lighting. Uh, the ambient lighting can be found on the lighting tab which looks like the uh, on light bulb and then I choose a color uh, for this one, I don't want something too bright. I want this map to be a little bit darker, so we'll choose something uh, that's not too bright. And then you can set the ambient light as on by toggling the switch there. And then going back to the play tab, we can turn on that light, the, the lighting effects, by clicking on the uh, light bulb there. And you'll see that that ambient light now illuminates the entire map so that it is not dark for you for the, for the players. So for this map, however, we don't want them to have everything as visible through ambient light. So we're going to go back to our ambient light setting and we're going to choose this add mask option here to cover the area which we want to add our own lighting effects. So we will choose to mask that and now that area is not affected by the ambient light. Next, we're going to start to lay out the line of sight items on the map, the walls, the windows, and the doors. Uh, for this, you'll go to the line of sight, the brick wall tab up at the top, and then you'll see you have multiple different types here of options that you can choose from uh, for your line of sight structures. I'll normally start with the doors and the windows as that'll make it easier to connect your walls to so that you don't have gaps in between some of them which allows for lights to sometimes slip through as the players are moving across the map. So to start off we will pick the door icon. So we'll choose the square icon when you're setting up the doors as it works a little bit easier to do the squares or the circles for doors as when you do just the line it creates a space that is hard to click on We'll take a look at that when we go into the play mode and it'll make a little bit more sense. But for now, we'll just choose to use the square icon for the doors, uh, hover over and highlight the door space on the, on the wall so that we know that that is a door. Here, I find it a little bit easier in order to connect the walls later to have at least two of the corners or the white stop icons uh, touching the wall so that when you come through laying out your walls uh, in the next step, you'll have something to connect to to prevent those line of sight issues. So we'll go around the map and we will set each door with a uh, door line of sight item. The other thing to be cognizant about while you're setting your doors is that your players will need to be able to walk through them, your player icons. So you will want to make sure that they cover enough space uh, that will cover at least one space of your grid so that it will not confuse the line of sight in the game so it will allow the player icons to go through the door once they are moving around the map themselves. So now that we have those doors set, 
The next thing we'll do is we will choose to do the windows. Uh, and we'll do the same thing here using the square icons. The thing to note about the windows are that you can make them toggleable or not toggleable, which means in the play mode, you can choose to make them so that they can or cannot be opened so that players can go through them. Uh, a lot of times the toggleable window can be used in certain circumstances where you want the players to be able to see through that particular uh, wall where you don't want their player characters to be able to move through but you want them to be able to see across is it like if they're on a roof you don't want them to be able to see over the roof but not run off the roof uh, and you can use windows instead of walls there that are not toggleable so that they can see through those walls while those walls still prevent their characters from actually moving through them for the walls we will choose the wall icon the brick wall icon and for this, we will just use the line as we are not concerned about having to be able to click on them to open or close. So for the wall, we will simply click on our click on a starting point. Here we've chosen the window, and then we will and we'll click around to set the wall. And then once we find out a stopping point, we can double click to end the wall uh, on the last spot that we've clicked. When setting up the walls near the windows and doors. It's uh, easier and oftentimes works better for line of sight once you're in play mode to connect them to the actual win windows and doors themselves uh, by clicking on the white endpoints on the already set windows and doors. This will prevent you from having uh, small gaps in between the walls and the windows or the doors where as the players move past them, their line of sight will allow them to see into the building or um, through the gap when you didn't intend so. And so again here as you're moving around the room it's easier uh, to prevent line of sight issues if you set a end marker at each intersection of your map. Uh, that'll allow you to connect back to it uh, when you are continuing along the wall from a different angle and will prevent any line of sight gaps from forming in the walls and so if you set a piece of the map that you don't like um, like this for example you can control Z and that will remove the last piece of the map that you set we now have the outlines of all of our buildings set up uh, the last thing we have is uh, this porch in the back in the alley and for this we are going to use a non toggleable window uh, this way, the players will be able to access the porch and will be able to see off the porch, but will be unable to move around and off the sides of the porch. So they will be unable to move through this zone that we've created, but they will be able to see through it. So as if they were looking over the, uh, as if they were looking over the railing. It is time to move on to the lighting effects. So for the lighting effects, we will choose the, uh, go back to the lighting icon, which is the, again, the illuminated uh, bulb at the top of the data panel. And this time we will choose the illuminated bulb add light effect here. Uh, and you can see that once this uh, is chosen, you have your uh, lighting effects uh, pane that shows up, which has your bright and dim light in your range as well as the fall off for each one of those. Uh, it has your color option that you can choose. You can set darkness and shadows, uh, as well as this behavior animation type, in which case you can set lights that will flicker, pulse, or flash. Um, you also have a few presets for some of the more common uh, items that you can choose. And when you choose one of those, it'll automatically set everything uh, to that setting. So for this, I like to just go ahead and look around the map and see um, something that we plan on using, whether it's uh, some, you know, maybe something that appears more often, such as these street lamps here. And we'll go ahead and we'll set the effect uh, that we want for those street lamps. And so it'll be a bright of 10 feet and a dim of 20 feet. Uh, and we will set that to kind of an orange glow. And then we're going to have no lighting effects. And then you will simply just click on the map where you would like to place those lights and then those lights will be set up to view them 
once again, we can come back over here and we can enable our lighting effects. And then you will see that this provides the light around the area uh, of, the, of the lamps that we've chosen. So while I like this, I'd kind of like to add a little bit more of a flavor to it. Um, so we'll go in and we'll choose this one by just clicking on it. And then we're going to set this one to have an animation of a flash. And we will drop the speed down some so that it will be going on and off while the players are making their way around this particular house. So we're going to go ahead and set the lighting effect or uh, turn off the uh, lighting effects again so that we can see inside the house. And we will take a look and see what the next items we are that we want to set up. So we notice we have uh, these little items that are putting off a little bit of light, um, but not as much as a an actual lamp would, such as this uh, computer screen or this little fortune teller. And so what we will do is we will go ahead and set up a smaller light, say five feet and ten feet. And for this one, we're going to choose the flicker behavior and we're going to set it to be pretty fast so that it flickers pretty quickly and then we will choose a, a color for our screen here and we will set that for our screen and then we will adjust the color again to match our map here for our fortune teller and we will set one on him as well so we have another little screen down here so we'll go back and we'll set that as well placing one on each one for now and then we'll go back and we will update how the uh, shadows uh, around it are affected and uh, how the light is actually projected um, once we've placed the lights around the actual map. We have a few overhead lights that aren't actually tokens on the map, but you can see have a little bit of light placed around. So for those, we're actually going to set a little bit wider of a dim light but we're still going to do a warm orangish yellow color and then also we have this string of lights here that we will place a couple for just to give that effect that the light is more continuous across the string um, these little candle lights that we have down here we'll choose our candle preset and you'll see that the bright light is zero and the dim light is five, so they give no bright light, but they do give a little bit of dim light. And so we will set one on each of those there. Now that we have the lighting set up, we will go back to our line of sights data panel tab here, and we are going to choose the shadow caster. This will allow us to create line of sight items that won't prevent the players from passing through them or seeing through them, but will affect the shadows and the light that is being cast by the lighting effects that we have set up. So we'll enable the lighting to see how those effects uh, appear on the map and these will be the areas that uh, we will use the uh, the shadow casting line of sight item to uh, interact with these different uh, lighting effects. So with our lighting effects disabled we will go to the line of sight uh, item on the data panel and we will choose the shadow caster and we will start off with a line these flat surfaces that create lighting effects uh, I prefer to just put a straight line you see that that'll prevent the light from moving behind it so that it appears as if the light is being given off by only one side of the advertisement board so then we will go through and we will set up uh, the other areas that may cast shadows such as uh, this sign here or uh, we will block off this particular advertisement panel because that will uh, prevent the lighting effects from circling around the actual box that is putting off the light. We will go just go through uh, the different lighting areas and set places where the actual items and tokens inside the map uh, may affect the lighting uh, that's being provided. For example, here in the bathtub, you don't want the, the light to be able to shine through um, the bathtub curtain. Uh, here you would may want the chair here to cast a shadow, so we'll draw something along that line as well. 
uh, this particular box will have cast a shadow. In order to make it appear as if the light is coming from up above, we'll draw the line on the back side of this bench. And that will, when we turn on the lighting effects, allow it to shine light on top of the bench, but then it'll create a shadowing effect on the other side of the bench. And so now you can see here that we have our lighting effects that have been drawn off. So this is what the players would see uh, when they walk in if they don't have some sort of dark or dim vision. That'll create a little bit of suspense with the dark area over here where the summoning circle is so that the players can't see that uh, if they, when they initially walk in unless they have some sort of special vision. So now we'll go to play. We'll make sure everything is turned on so that we can uh, view what the players do. And let's uh, test it out. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our combat tracker here. We've already got our token added into the combat tracker. And so we will click and drag them onto the map. We're going to go into our grid and activate our grid real quick just to make sure we have him set uh, on the grid where we want him. So we'll go to the play button up here on top uh, on our panel. And then we can click on our token to view what the player would view and we can move around the map using our arrow keys. So you can see as we come around the corner here, it unveils this side. It will also allow us to see in through the window here um, as they pass by. There is no option to toggle this window we have here set for the balcony, but we can see over it as if it uh, is not a full wall. But here when we hover in over these items, you can see that there is an option to open them so that we can pass through them. Uh, this is why you don't want to just use a line for your windows or your doors. Uh, this would create a very difficult uh, space to try and click on uh, when you're going through. So open the door and see this window, since it is toggleable, we can open it and then pass through it. So with all the windows and doors working, if we'd like to try out a token with a different set of lighting, what we can do is we can click on our uh, effects tab up here in the top right with the little walking man and then we can choose to find a a, a light source uh, such as this lantern that will provide him now with a lantern for light uh, which provides him a lighting effect and then as we walk back through around the house it illuminates those dark spaces so should the players choose to activate a light, they will be able to see the entirety of the of the home. So if you found this helpful, please check out the other videos we have on our channel regarding Fantasy Grounds Unity here. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed.